What's up, everybody? We can't fucking do it. We can't escape UFO news. But but this this is different. That we're we're bringing back an oldie. Yeah, that's kind of true. That we're bringing up an oldie but goodie, which kind of I, I mean I don't know. After researching, I have some questions about why we're considering an oldie but goodie. But a, a case that we covered a long time ago has popped back up in the news, and we'll get into why. But if you're not if you haven't already figured out, we're talking about the Malaysian Airlines flight MH370. Now, when this happened, Mike, we did a special report episode on this, and uh, I got to say... With the legendary Aldo Poe, no less. Is, is, no shit. Yeah, yeah. It was the three of us doing that, that show. Man, whatever happened to that guy? Vanished. Vanished into thin air, I tell you. I know. Yeah. Maybe... Maybe he got abducted by aliens and, and he's behind all of this. He was the mastermind all along. He was getting into our coming on the show, making us think that he was one of us. But we always joked that, that he wasn't. And maybe we were right. And now <laughs> somewhere he's he's out fucking controlling armadas of evil aliens ready to just bombard the planet with plasma... Whatever the... What are they called? Pla- Plasma torpedoes, photon torpedo. I'm not a Star Trek guy. I don't. I don't remember what they're called. Photon. But you know what I'm talking about. Somebody does anyway. I know somebody does. We actually got a request to have Aldo back on for the uh, 10 year anniversary show, and I had to say I wish I would have loved yeah. to have Aldo back on the show, but he's he like I said he's he's in fucking outer space and. I don't know how to get in touch with outer space people. Even even evil time traveling Barack Obama doesn't give me the uh, the ability to communicate with people in space. My my network is is resigned to Earth, unfortunately. So it's a don't call me, I'll call you type of thing. Yeah, it really is. It's kind of it's kind of bullshit. If I'm being honest, I I I, I feel like like I I feel like the that that like pretty girl at the at the dance that the guy's like oh yeah hey, hey what's going on lady and then like oh i hope i hope he calls me and he's like yeah yeah i'll call you and then you know you don't hear from the dude until he comes back in town like two summers later and and then you're just like you know what i'm not that interested in you anymore guy so <laughs> you know maybe 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 it's time for me to move on and find a new time traveling overlord I'll be I'll be taking applications. Uh, just email the whatcasters at gmail dot com and uh, I'll I'll review all applications for new for new Lord and Master. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> damn you, Etob! Damn you! I told you he'd betray you in the end. That's what he that's what he does. He hasn't betrayed me. He just neglected me. I feel scorned. <laughs> just like, yeah, you're scorned. So after reading about this case, and I mean, forgive me if I sound too harsh, I just don't remember why we found this so bizarre and strange enough to cover on the show, other than it just, I mean, they were reporting that it had disappeared. That's what they were reporting, that it was just gone. So maybe that's what caught our attention. Um, We kind of watched the whole thing unravel in real time, but... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we we did the episode, like, the day after it happened. We recorded the episode. And already at that point, it had become, like, this this media frenzy where, like, this was all that was being talked about. And, uh, you know, way way back then when we were doing this show, like, we, we, we had... Well, at least I don't want to speak for you, but at least I had a very different outlook on the paranormal and and UFOs in general. And I was I was much more inclined towards belief rather than skepticism, I would say. You know, I had a decent amount of skepticism at that point, but 
uh, I, I was still very, very much wanting to believe. So I would, you know, I was willing to believe. You know, I um, kind of felt the same feelings when I was reading about this. Uh, mm. To be a little bit harsh, I, I when I got done reading this, I was like, "Why the fuck did we talk about this?" And maybe I, I was like, "Maybe I'm getting old. I maybe I'm getting a little bit more cynical as I get older." But I mean, I, to me, I was just like, "So an airplane, you know, it goes missing over an ocean." I'm sure that happens. I, I mean, I'm not a debris yeah. expert, but I was like, "What the fuck? Why did we do this?" And it, I, I think it was for one the transponder just like disappeared and there were there was some weirdness to it that was reported in the days following i don't think when we um when we had covered it there was a lot that really um that really i don't know that 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 was really concrete i think at that point it was like fuck this thing just disappeared we don't know where it went right and they weren't able you know they were following the flight or they they flew over the flight path looking for debris in the ocean or you know burning oil patches or whatever and they didn't find it and that that was the weird thing because if they were flying on course there would be a trail of debris if if it had crashed into the ocean we would have found something and we didn't find anything. So that that was the weirdness. Right. I think that's what it was, too, from what I remember. It was the shock of the news calling it a disappearance. They weren't saying, you know, a, a, a crashed or downed. Or we're, we're, we're looking for debris. They're saying we have been and there's nothing. It's, dis- it's just completely disappeared. Right. Yeah. Well, there's some, uh, you know, a lot of time has passed and there's a lot more information that's come out about the situation of this uh, flight disappearing. And uh, even after all this time passing with this new information that I'll cover, Mike's going to cover something that might prove that all this shit was wrong, too. So for those who don't remember, on March 8th, 2014, a flight uh, from Malaysia Airlines, flight uh, MH370, was set to travel to Beijing and take off at 12.25 in the middle of the night. Now, this plane was a Boeing 777, and this is considered by pilots to be the best plane in the fucking world and a modern fucking marvel of aviation. No kidding. This is supposed to be the coolest thing to ever fly in the fucking sky. And this Boeing 777 was being captained by Zahiri Shah, he was 53 years old. He had 18,000 flight hours. He was an expert at the Boeing 777. As a matter of fact, he had a home flying simulation system, which was based on the Boeing 777. So he was literally an expert at flying this fucking airplane. He had a co-pilot named Farouk Hamid, who uh, was like a couple fucking months away from being certified as a captain himself. Both had passed mental health exams regularly. At about 10 p.m., the security cameras captured the captain and the co-pilot passing security gates and boarding the airplane. Next, 10 other staff members, hostesses, and stewards boarded the plane. Boarding the passengers went as usual by 11.20. All passengers were seated on the plane. There were 227 passengers on this flight. At 12.25, the plane readied for takeoff, on track and on time. Everything was running smoothly. Everybody I saw talk about this commented about how normal the fucking day was. Well, yeah, it's always going to be normal until it's not <laughs> until normal. Until it's not, you know, yeah. like, like No one's like, you know what? It's a really fucking weird day, and then a fucking, our plane was abducted by aliens. <laughs> like, no, no, your, your, your day starts normal, and then the weirdness comes to you. Like, if you wake up, and uh, so I was in the airport, and Bigfoot was in the airport, and I knew shit was about to go down because he got... He was trying to get in on my plane, and and they got they stopped him at the gate, and they said, "There's there's no Bigfoots allowed on this plane." And I'm like, "Yeah, Bigfoot, we don't want you on our plane." And then we got on the plane, but when we got on the plane, there was a man in black by the door, and he looked at me real weird, like, but he didn't say anything. So I went on the plane, and and I swear to God, there was a gray alien in the bathroom. <laughs> and then we took off, and then and then the, the, then the spacecraft showed up, and then and teleported us into outer space, and now we're in outer space. Right, right. It was just completely yeah. normal day before yeah. the aliens came. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
because they don't want to give you warning. They don't want to give, hey, heads up, we're about to fucking teleport you to another dimension. Uh, no, please. Well, too bad. We're just giving you a heads up. Ah, oh, fuck. It's going to be one of those days. Right. Is there like a whole air traffic controller code? If if three guys named Larry have bad feeling in the same day, we shut down everything. Yeah, that's that's the omen. We know from experience. Larry's know what's up. There's just two traffic controllers in a tower sweating fucking bullets while intense music plays waiting for a phone to ring. It finally does. What's, what's, what does the third Larry say? <laughs> Larry, it's Larry. Yeah, Larry? Yeah, you're right. I don't feel good about this. They hit a button. <laughs> That's the Larry alarm. Shut it all down. We're all going to die in Bigfoot's here. <laughs> Someone try to bring a dog man in their carry-on baggage. <laughs> For the love of God, Larry, why didn't you warn us? By 1235, the plane is in the air. The plane was to fly in a straight line over the South China Sea. Uh, they get a call from... Air- Wait a second, Mateo. <laughs> Are you telling me that they're they're flying a straight line? This is This is not... The flat earth. You can't fly in straight lines. Well, I mean, like as a as a crow flies. I mean, they're going in one direction for the whole flight until they hit Beijing. All right. I just I just was I was hoping you weren't not insinuating <laughs> that this was a flat earth. No, there's some new video going around that's called Guy Proves That the Earth's Flat in Five Minutes. I'm like, oh, no, God. you don't. You don't really. Yes. Yes. That's <laughs> That's what we need to start covering is, is <laughs> flat earth fucking stupidity. That's coming coming soon to an episode in your ear holes. Yeah. Stupid flat earth shit. So they get a call from traffic control and it's total protocol stuff alerting the plane, quote, you are about to leave our airspace. You are about to arrive in the Vietnamese airspace to which the plane replied a good night as if they would be you know at this time they'd be switched over to the vietnamese air traffic controllers and this was all they say is basic takeoff and transfer messages that they would give to each other the tower to the plane the plane to the tower when the plane levels out it's traveling at eleven thousand meters above sea level all sensors indicate that everything was operating normally and they were to reach their destination on time. In the whole case of this thing disappearing, the only oddity noticed was while the plane was in communication with air traffic control in Kuala Lumpur, uh, they were reporting their flight levels and all the information, like a check-in as, as they were going to be switched over. And for some reason, they needlessly and like unprompted uh, repeated themselves the exact same thing twice. I don't know if you knew that, Mike, or if you find that no. strange. I, I, what, what was it that they repeated? Just there, it says uh, the people who I saw, it was their flight level. So it was, uh, you know, like they were passing this traffic, air con traffic control, and they're like, hey, it's flight, you know, MH370, we're at 1100 feet traveling, blah, 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 and our destination is Beijing. Everything's on track and they okay over. And they're like, cool. And then they're like, hey, this is flight uh, MH370. <laughs> We're traveling at 11,000 feet at this speed, and we're headed to Beijing. Everything's on the up and up and over. And they're like, yeah, we got that. And when they said that, you know, everything seemed okay, and they switched to the Vietnamese air traffic control. Then suddenly, at 1.21 a.m., interestingly enough, uh, I saw two or three different investigators say this was the exact moment, according to their travel records, that they were to be entering Vietnamese airspace. So at 121, at this exact moment, the plane loses all contact with the ground. No communications, no radar, no uh, detection of this fucking airplane whatsoever. They do note that communications are famously difficult over the China Sea at night. And as a side note, we've talked about that before when it comes to like the weather control stuff about how uh, there's some some guy who wrote a book. I'm sorry. It was like 10 years before we started the webcast. But I heard him be interviewed. He wrote a book called Weather Warfare, I believe, if you can find it. But he talked about how 
the government started taking that shit seriously on how to manipulate the weather when they they figured that at nighttime the the atmosphere isn't heated up by the sunlight anymore so it cools down and radio signals bounce through the atmosphere instead of bounce around and they would actually spray like silver uh, particles and all that shit and basically create like an aluminum metal type shield around the atmosphere so, yeah the uh the chemtrail thing yeah 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 that's where that that whole thing comes from uh, and to me I, that, when i read that at night time it was difficult to uh have you know radios just didn't work i was like hey they're not getting sprayed <laughs> But the air traffic controllers from both Malaysia and Vietnam go through every protocol, every procedure. Having other towers try to make contact with the plane, having other planes try to contact the plane, uh, check and try a multitude of radars until at 1.38 a.m., they officially came to the conclusion that they had lost the plane. This plane was nowhere. Uh, and it's so interesting to hear all these different people talk about this plane disappearing. You get to hear people who are journalists who were following this as this happened, aviation experts, uh, witnesses, all this stuff. And when they say that it disappeared, I mean, it's they, they lost everything. It didn't show up on any type of radar. Uh, maybe that was an addition to why we covered it, too, because maybe they were going to that much detail of how, I mean, how blatantly this thing disappeared. And it was like in an instant, they're about, you know, I mean, they're about to be transferred to the Vietnamese air control. And all of a sudden they just weren't there to be talked to anymore. Yeah. And there were, there's a, I, I don't know if you came across any, any of the, the older stuff, um, but the New York times reported uh, around the, I don't remember exactly how far after the disappearance occurred that they reported this, but um, they they reported that the Malaysian military radar data showed that the it, they showed that it climbed to forty five thousand feet before descending unevenly to twenty three thousand feet. Um, they were able to pull data from the engines. Uh, the engines were were made by Rolls Royce, and they've got tracking data in the engines. So they were able to to pull that, and they showed that it descended a total of forty thousand feet in the space of a minute. Holy and that, that, shit! A, that just doesn't make any sense at all. Is is what the uh, one of the the people that were monitoring the the radar said that it, it, it just doesn't make sense hmm well this plane was due to land at 6 30 a.m the next day and when it didn't arrive friends and family were told that the flight was delayed and at 10 30 family and friends were still waiting around to hear from their loved ones and again they were just told that the flight was delayed and shortly after that the airline itself held a press conference and announced that they had lost all contact with this plane. And then that's pretty much, I mean, all I remember after that was us uh, waiting to hear if they found anything. I remember the the absolutely heartbreaking videos of uh, family members just like losing their shit. Like not, not from hearing bad news, but just being at a fucking airport for two days and them not telling them anything it was just it was just awful when it happened is that how it ended for for you mike it was just waiting to see what they found and they just didn't. yeah it just got to the point where it was being covered like that was all that was being covered and there was nothing new at all and i just got sick of hearing about it and then the news stopped talking about it after like 12 years and uh um, that was really the last I paid attention until this, this recent video came out. Right, right. There was a couple of things I did find out about this. At, like I said, it, it's been some time and other information has, has uh, surfaced. Uh, there was one guy that said it might have been an uh, engine fire, and he said that if that's the case, rule number one is to land. I don't know where they'd land and, uh, when they're going across the fucking southern china sea there was one guy who was an investigator a journalist i believe 
who noted that in other cases where planes had to make emergency landings uh, or uh, were in fact going down, were going to crash, uh, passengers busted out their cell phones and called home. They called loved ones. And he had made a point that uh, the people in this area who traveled on this, this flight went from Malaysia to China, Malaysia to China, Malaysia to China most of the time. And they usually had two cell phones, one for Malaysia and one for China. Not one person tried to call anybody. Nobody got a call from anybody that was on this flight. And I don't know if what, you know, does that mean to you that it just went down or was destroyed very quickly? I mean, I'd hate to say it, but like a missile strike or the detonation of a bomb. Maybe. I mean, it, it seems, it does seem weird that, uh, for one, the pilots didn't report anything. In. You know, if there's, if there's document that shows this thing went to 45,000 feet and then down to 23,000 feet. Um, it, it doesn't make sense that uh, they wouldn't have reported something. You know, there, there's typically two people in the cockpit. So one person would have been controlling the plane, the other person could, unless there was something uh, preventing them from doing so, maybe. Right. I mean, there's plenty of... Uh black box recordings where people are just screaming for fucking help. I mean, the first thing they do is get on the horn, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, even even flight 19, they were the entire time they were fucking lost. They were record, you know, they were they were in contact with and they were trying to figure out what was going on. They were reporting that they were low on fuel. They and then the there's always it, it for some reason that's it sticks with me, but the last transmission, we are now entering white water. And then that was it. Ooh, next song. Yeah. Now <laughs> entering white water. There were a couple other things that I found that were interesting. The, the captain of the pilot, we talked about him having a flight simulator at home. One that was specifically designed to simulate a Boeing 777. One of the first things that came up is they discovered uh, after investigating his house that he had flown a suicide mission simulation going directly into uh, the southern China Sea. So, well, that does sound suspicious when you when you first think about that. Let's also think about any time any single person ever has played Grand Theft Auto. Like if you can do stuff in a game, you're going to want to at least try it. Right, I I literally equated that to uh, I just envisioned myself being this poor guy, and like that, like having this unfortunate thing happen. My ghost looking down on these investigators and having me go look suicide mission, and me going, no, I fell asleep. I fell asleep playing this thing, and I just yeah. or, you know, like like think about how stressful a pilot's job must be, and maybe d- just a way to blow off stream. You're like, you know what? I'm going to crash this fucker. I'm bringing it down. <laughs> right, then, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then you're like, ah, I feel much better now. Right, yeah. You know, I don't think that's the red flag that people try to make it. Because, right. like I said, again, give anybody Grand Theft Auto, and they're going to they're gonna fucking run over civilians. They're going to shoot people. They're going to bang hookers. All that <laughs> shit. Yeah, if I had a flight simulator and I was a fucking pilot with uh, 18,000 hours of airtime under my belt, I can see there's a definitely a point in time where I would have killed maybe, I don't know, a leader or two of ENJ, got on that thing and like faked the whole fight with <laughs> a zombie fucking passengers and fucking... Sure, why not? I have to take yeah. this down for the better of humanity. I, I, I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Or, you know, or... Try to because it's a simulator. Just be like, you know what? I'm gonna try to fly between some buildings and see if I can make it. Right? Yeah, for sure. Just, just because. Why not try it? Pretend you're like the Millennium Falcon going through fucking cliffs and shit. <laughs> there was one journalist who mentioned that the co-pilot was kind of known for breaking the rules, uh, notably having people in the co- cockpit who shouldn't be. Oh, flying fast and loose. Yep. But again, they they said he was very reliable. He was a great co-pilot and again, so so while he would let people come into the cockpit, he wasn't having 
Coke and hooker parties, you're saying? Yeah, maybe. I mean, that's the only person I'd. Well, that doesn't sound reliable to me, Mateo. <laughs> if, if you're if you're having, if you if you're engaging in that sort of shenanigans, I wouldn't consider you a reliable individual. Is is that all it takes to get coke and hooker parties? Is to be a pilot? I I don't know. I bet I bet that they've got a way to to arrange that though. They're like, you know what? I'm a pilot. They don't check my luggage. I'm like, oh shit. Party time. Uh, I don't necessarily want a, a, a Coke and hooker party, but uh, I mean, like, <laughs> it wouldn't hurt to be but offered. But if I did, I, I would like to know the best, the best <laughs> job for that sort of party. So <laughs> if, if any of our dear listeners are, are employees of, of any uh, airlines... <laughs> Could you please let us know the Coke and Hooker policy on board planes? I would really appreciate it. We're asking for Inquiring friends. Inquiring minds want to know. It's it's a research for the podcast. Relax. Yeah, it's it's purely for research. We're we're not looking to find you know ways to engage in this sort of activity. We're not. Yeah. Don't email us you know, like what information no. you need for us to apply. Like I don't want your address if you yourself are having a coke and hooker party. Maybe I do. No, but no, But no. I'm not going to show up. <laughs> but you can give me your address. Definitely not going to show up though. Oh well, this this flight, as we mentioned earlier, has shown up into the news again. And when you asked me if I had seen why it was back in the news. I had. I saw it a week ago, and I just, I just don't know what to fucking believe anymore. So I was like, okay, I don't. I mean, probably not. But uh, you said that uh, you told me not so quick there, fatso. That's that's a direct quote too, by the way. <laughs> I'm I'm often uh, poking fun at Mateo for his uh, unique body mass. It's called podcaster body. I call it potato man <laughs> I did exercise you're not through fooling the whole me with those tattoos <laughs> I know you're a fucking potato that chest hi- <laughs> that chest hair is hiding double D's and I know it <laughs> oh triple potatoes <laughs> oh god <laughs> yeah wait sorry sorry what else am I supposed to think about myself guys <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you're co-hosting a show with a blummy, so what do you what do you want? <laughs> Just a bunch of fucking circus freaks over here. <laughs> a blummy with a beard? Yikes! Yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah, it would just look like it would be wearing like hair underwear. <laughs> my well, my I was just gonna say my beard also doubles as my pubes. <laughs> it's 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 my bubes, my bubes hair. Oh my god, we were talking about an airplane disappearing. I swear, uh, we were. I got I got caught up in all this talk of of our hideous features. <laughs> you know, you. I mean, have you met somebody f- like through the podcast and never had them contact you again? Yeah, Aldo Poe. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, just reopening old moods. <laughs> yeah, I still I still feel like I I've, I've been stood up on prom night. It's I cry into my pillow nightly. Although if you're listening to this, you broke my heart. I mean, there's been a I mean, a lot of mention of Aldo Poe lately for like really. So, yeah, Aldo, if you're listening, just send us an email that says fart. You don't have to talk to us. We know we stink. Or, or if you're in outer space and you're somehow getting this like Make a crop circle in my backyard. Fucking yeah, easy. Or or blow up my neighbor's garage with a space laser. <laughs> so what what puts this case back into the news, Mike? Fucking aliens, Mateo. Oh. Aliens bring it back. George Sukalis is just fucking rolling in his fucking mint of of coins made of alien gold. It is aliens, yeah, goddamn it. It's, it's, it is, and it all comes back to alien. Like, all roads lead to Rome? No. All roads lead to fucking aliens. Mm-hmm. So th- there's this video that that's come out that's supposed to be footage from a Chinese satellite. It's uh, 
I guess it's called NROL-32, which was launched in 2010, and it remained stationary over the Indian Ocean. And so it was allegedly recording as this thing flew over. And uh, the video that was released, it, it's got um, a, a regular camera view and a thermal camel camera view. Of, of what's going on. And you see the plane flying over. And all of a sudden an orb comes flying in. And starts going around the plane. And then another one. And then it there ends up being three. And they're just flying in circle around the plane. Just circling and circling. And then you see a flash. And the plane's gone. And in the camera footage. When the flash occurs. Like the the clouds, like you can actually see the the flash lighting up the surrounding clouds, so it's like a like a reflection on the clouds. Um, and in the thermal footage, where this thing opened up, it registers as being black, which is significant because theoretically speaking, when wormholes are created by some f- sort of exotic matter. Uh, it would have a negative internal temperature. So in thermal vision, it would be black. Seeing this thing, it would be black, right? Hmm. But when you see it on the regular camera, it looks like it's a flash of light. So you know, we, we typically you see light and you equate light with some f- sort of heat. But in this case, it's the opposite, where where this whatever it was. Uh, is showing the negative internal temperature. Wow. Okay, so where where does this footage come from? Is this leaked stuff? Is this uh um so I guess it's been leaked by uh the 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 source of it, it it's unknown, I guess. It's thought that it was somehow smuggled and released like anonymously. So there, there's a lot of like scrutiny that this video has has gotten, and it's it's not clear if it's a hoax or not. Um, if it's a hoax, it's pretty. It's it's it looks good. They did a good job, like I said, with the the light that flashed. It, it actually reflected onto the um, onto the surrounding clouds in a believable way, not not like some fucking post effect that some amateur threw on um and then in addition to that being able to do that and then also having the knowledge of the the theory that one of the that a a wormhole created by exotic matter would have a negative temperature and then have that reflected in the uh the thermal camera it it seems too convenient um but also i as I, I kind of get the feel like the uh, uh, Dome of the Rock UFO, where there's no real clear answer what that what it what we're seeing whether it's a hoax because because remember that one there were three different angles of that one but it was claimed it was shot down and claimed to be a hoax but nobody came forth and said that they were the ones that did it no one ever claimed it as their own so. Um, and well, then wasn't only got, like one of those angles proven to be a hoax, but the other two were, yeah, yeah, okay. The other two were, and like the coolest one was one of the ones that was not that wasn't said to be a hoax, so th- that was that was pretty fucking cool. But yeah, that, that one still gets like I love that video so much, and I, I, I don't, I like, I in my head, I want that to be real. And if it's a hoax, I hope I never find out about it. I just, I want to keep the magic of it just because of the way that like I, when that happened, I remember watching those videos as soon as, as that event happened and it was, you know, I was on the news and shit and just, just like the feeling that I had, like it it really felt to me like it was real. Like, you know, sometimes you see the, well, most times you see these videos and you're like, yeah, I don't know. That could be, that doesn't seem real, or that could be whatever. It could be this, that, and the other thing. And but that one, it was just to me, it just really fucking. It seemed like it was real. It had the feeling of being real. And 
I, I don't want to fucking lose that magic. So if it's not real, I don't fucking want to know. <laughs> what do you what do you have to say about people's just natural instincts? I mean, seeing a piece of footage and having it looked fake. How much of it is that, of, of that is our instinct saying like, no, that's bullshit to where when you come across a piece of footage like the Dome of the Rock, I honestly had never seen that footage until you showed me that footage. And it definitely has a feeling of to where you're like you're, you can catch your mind trying to debunk it while you watch it. And it kind of just can't. So it has this very massive feeling of awe when you watch it. How much of that do you think is just our natural human instinct to be able to be like, no, that's bullshit because it looks like shit. It doesn't look natural. We've talked about that a lot. How, how, when, I mean, I, I guess it's mostly in terms of like, like death stuff, you know, like real life gore, things like that. Like how, how you look at it and you're like, that's, that's not real. That, that looks so fucking fake because what we see in the movies is so fucking gory and over the top that when we actually see it in real life, it doesn't compare. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, it, that would stand to reason with, with something like UFOs. Cause we're used to all this, this flashy pomp and circumstance. And, and then you see a, a, a picture you can, you you just can't conceive of that being, a real picture of, of what it is like those. Um, I think they were from the the fifties. It might've been the sixties. Remember the, the sequence of, of photos taken on that farm of that UFO as it was flying away. Yeah. It kind of looked fireish, like fiery. No, no, it was black and white photos. They're really famous photos. I can't remember the, the name of the, the farmer, but they took, I think it was three, three, photographs of this craft as it was flying over their house and they had no reason to lie about it they were by all accounts really honest people and uh it, it you look at this and it just and it looks it looks like a fucking you or like a like a flying saucer but it's also like it looks too real that it doesn't look real yeah. and it, it's just I think that's just what the mind does with with things because we're just used to seeing things one way and when you see the reality of what it is, you're just like, that That can't, no, that's not real. Well, that, and that can't be it. To me, it just kind of makes me think of like when you're a kid and you saw like a blimp for the first time. You had no idea yeah. what it was, but you your mind didn't go, that's not real. You just were like, what right. the fuck you're is You're just that? like, what the fuck is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing uh, a crane, the bird, flying for the first like I had never seen one before and I remember it flying over and in my head because of the way I I don't know if anyone's ever had the chance to I, I'm sure some of you guys have, have a, had a chance to see a crane in flight but they just have this really weird way of flying and it really resembles a fucking pterodactyl they've got these long beaks and just these slow deliberate flapping of their wings and as they're flying across, like it almost looks like it's in slow motion. And I remember seeing it as a kid. And in my head, that was a pterodactyl. And like I can still remember how my, my brain was recalling it when I was a kid. And, and now being an adult, having seen several cranes throughout my life, I know that what I saw was a crane. But <laughs> I can still think back to my little kid brain and how it perceived it and how it even looked. And like I swear to God, as a kid, it had the fucking, you know, the horn that that I don't know if it's the pterosaur or, the, or what. One of those flying dinosaurs has that fucking Crest. horn that comes off the back of the head. And I swear to God, it had that, and it had a fucking tail with a ball on the end. But it, it was definitely the fucking feet of the, the crane. But <laughs> yeah, in my head, it was this fucking weird pterodactyl amalgamation creature thing. It's crazy. Well, it looks like somebody's trying to say that there is video footage of uh, what caused the disappearance of flight MH three seventy. Yeah. So, i've i've got I've got some more weirdness to add to that, though. Yeah, yeah. So back in when this happened, um, the, there's a ABC News report that came out March twelfth, two thousand fourteen. 
and they're saying this this is coming out of um Ho Chi Minh City and posted by the Chinese government where they show that there were three unidentified objects floating in the water between Malaysia and Vietnam along the flight path of the Malaysian Airlines aircraft. And initially they thought it was debris in the area where the plane had crashed, but it was determined that that was in fact not what that was. And it it wasn't anything to do with the debris. But the objects measured 78 feet by 72 feet, and then there were two smaller ones that were um, around 40 feet by 60 feet. Holy shit. Now, you look at how things have gone now, and you look at the date of when that was said. You can see why it was just, like, swept under a rug, because I didn't hear that shit at all. And like I said, me and you were waiting for shit to be said about this. Yeah, I don't... I don't it's... I remember hearing, and then there was another, um, there was another report that came out from, um, the Royal Malaysian Air Force chief, and he was talking about how right before MH370 vanished from radar, there were these unidentified blobs that showed up on their military radar. Near the flight? Yeah. Ooh. And then the... Then it disappeared. Okay, so hold on a second. (laughs) So now this looks like we have more evidence of this being some type of UFO interference than anything. I I mean, if if so, just right now, what I what I did was just report three separate things, and and then we're we're kind of tying them together. They could be three completely separate incidents that. Because right now, this, this video that's leaked, we don't even know who the leaker is or even for sure if it is this supposed to be this this craft or this, this airline. Um, there's some people that say that the video is real, but it's not this particular airline. It's, right. something, some, it's a different one, but it's the footage is real. So to me... I thought that it seemed weird that they kept up the the news cycle on this for so long um, the first time around when there was no new information, but it was all that anyone talked about on the news ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually when that's happening, there's something else going on, and and that's why they this big story is out there to, to capture attention while some shady shit happens. Now we've got all the... UFO disclosure push and all the the other stuff that's going on and um with with what we talked about last week with John D'Souza and the way he's saying it he even said that we're going to see these things take out aircraft and again these what he's saying is that these things that are being reported by the pilots and and you know being presented as evidence to Congress now are man-made objects and they're designed for this purpose. So what this, this, you know, now that we're getting this stuff out about UFOs and stuff, we tie that back to a case where we had a, an aircraft disappear. And then, then you're like, look this, cause we've got this leaked video. Like how long is it going to be before that's confirmed that that's what it is. And then we're like, Oh shit, we've got, We've got fucking UFOs taking out planes now. Now it's a threat. But interestingly enough, uh, speaking of these things as as threats, um, there's this video from, I want to say the 90s, where um, there was a, uh, one of the Atlantis launches, the craft Atlantis, not, not launching the lost city of Atlantis. The, the NASA spacecraft Atlantis, they were getting ready to launch and there were all these orbs in the sky. And one of the, uh, the shuttle programmer, Wayne Hale, was being interviewed and he said that for many years we've chased many of these objects and he said they don't know what they are, but he said they've never represented a threat. 
And he said that live on Fox News at that point. Hmm. And um, it aired once and it, it was scrubbed. You can you can find the, the clip, though, um, if you look. I would just say look for NASA shuttle or NASA programmer Wayne Hale UFO or something. I don't know. You, you should be able to find it. But, yeah, so I, I just think that that's interesting that here we've got uh, a spacecraft that's being launched into outer space and we've got these orbs that are seemingly following it or, or you know, checking in on it. And NASA is saying it's, they're not showing, they're not threatening. And now we've got this video of these things happening and uh, making this aircraft disappear. I don't know, man. Hmm. I don't know. Well, before we get into our uh, UFO news update, if this wasn't it already, I've seen a huge increase of videos that are supposed to be, I mean, they're almost like replicas of the Vegas aliens in our backyard footage, which ended up being bogus. I mean, the footage that came out later that they, quote, released of the, the creatures was just complete fake CGI bullshit and ended up being garbage, but... It seems like there's been an influx of a video like that with UFOs and, and all this stuff. I'm seeing videos from five years ago putting today's date stamped on it. I'm seeing uh, UFO cases and footage that I know about that are being uh, labeled as being in a different part of the fucking world. Now, I know that footage like the Vegas footage and stories like that are going to cause a bunch of, of knuckleheads to try to make their own video footage like that and get it passed off as real. Just as much as I know is that uh, their powers that be are going to have a bunch of videos like that made and put on the internet just to muddy the waters and keep shit uh, focused on that. Do you think that's what this piece of footage is? Is somebody's just found some old weird uh, satellite footage that's not been used or that was of no particular importance and they've just added some CGI on it and they're putting it out and saying it's from China? Maybe. Um. Yeah. I I I I think it's manipulated footage likely. Um I don't think it necessarily is actually what happened. Um probably what happened was that it was made to explode and then the um the debris field was either recovered like they they had someone ready to recover it or it was intentionally sunk before anyone could could get there and maybe you know who knows what the reasoning behind it was at the time maybe maybe it was intentionally made for for this purpose so so that we could you know when this video came out we're like oh shit it was fucking aliens that took this thing like they they can really they can they're they're an actual threat like that they're dangerous it could happen to anybody on flights at any time and and like we were talking last week fear is like the greatest motivator you can you can have and you make people afraid and and you're gonna fucking be able to manipulate them in any way you want you know you, you give them something to be afraid of and you pave the way for them to go to alleviate their fears and their concerns. So you want to fucking control a populace and make sure they can't go anywhere, make them afraid to fucking fly. And then everyone stays right where they are. Uh, that's scary to think about, and it sounds perfect and like it would work. I mean, you just make the skies unflyable and nobody's fucking going anywhere. No uh, products are going to be going anywhere. Yeah, everyone, everyone's afraid to fly, you know. You just start taking down more, cra and then and then you take out military craft, and it's like, oh fuck, dude! If they're taking out our fighter jets, what what chance do we have? Space force, watch out! Yeah, we so, got the space force. We, yeah, sorry. Enter space force, and uh, <laughs> then then space. So space force saves the day, and then they become like the most important military that's out there, and they're like, we are the space force. And they're they're using they now that they've defeated the alien scourge now they get the to use all those neat toys that they, that they just took from the aliens and like 
now we have our own UFOs that we can fly around and then all of a sudden it's Space Force World Police. Yeah, and, dude. And, you know, before you know it, we're fucking living in, in a mega city somewhere and there's judges everywhere that's, I'm law. And <laughs> we're all fucked. Yeah, and they're going to have to make a new tax for the Space Force because now we need more money to defend ourselves from intergalactic yeah, We need terrorists. to go to space, Mateo. <laughs> we, need, we need fucking super space lasers and we need to weaponize the, the International Space Station and, uh, you know, it's for our protection that there's lasers pointed at Earth. It's only if the aliens get past the lasers pointed in space that the ones pointed at Earth are going to step in. No need to be worried or concerned. These are these are friendly lasers that are not here. They're, they're definitely not going to blow up your city. Don't even fucking worry about it. They're here strictly for alien defense. I believe it. Well, I don't. I think it's <laughs> bullshit. Before we wrap this up, we do have to do our other UFO news update. Uh, our good buddy Delago wrote in the Discord something very interesting. We were talking about the stuff that was going on in Peru. And he has found some information that states that basically people were seeing people uh, dressed very strange that were attacking people. And it was. Uh, I don't know if it was like the cartel or gangs, but it looks like it's people who are actually wearing jetpacks that were robbing the mines that were around there, and they would fly down in there, steal what they could, and fly out. Is that more ridiculous than saying it's aliens, or, I mean, is it still a psyop cover-up? It's both more ridiculous, more awesome, and more terrifying. (laughs) Some guys with jetpacks, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, I mean, yeah, and and I I think he also mentioned that that the uh, Peruvian government was asking for help from the U.S. Air Force as well to help monitor the airspace and shoot down jetpack alien cartel members. <laughs> Jesus, see, it's gonna be way worse. Everything's gonna be way worse than we think. It's when a creepy super villain comes out. I mean, we're already past, like, the vulture type of, of character. It's going to be way worse when that happens in real life. Yeah, we kind of skipped over that phase. We're like, no, we don't, we're not using wings. We got fucking jetpacks. Yeah. And then we already know that they can use them to rob mines. So there's going to be, like, a squad of, like, 30 jetpack dudes that land in some super high secure, secu- like, government facility that holds alien metal that controls all elements and... It's not going to be like a truck pulling up and dudes pouring out of it. It's just going to fall down from the sky. Yeah, that's scary shit, man. I don't like it. I don't approve. I didn't sign off on this. The Marvel Universe and the movies have really inspired everyone, I guess. Yeah, I mean, good on them, man. Maybe that's going to inspire an actual superhero to come forward. That's uh, not Phoenix Jones. Not that there's anything wrong with Phoenix Jones, but... Right, right. I think the fact that there's not an Iron Man suit that's been created since the first Iron Man movie came out is pure bullshit. I think there has to oh, be like yeah, a there's, Mark there's by now. There's so many out there. Anybody, anybody who is like an independent guy who tried to make one likely got fucking murdered and they stole his Iron Man suit. There, There's a whole bunker of fucking awesome Iron Man suits right now somewhere. They just keep storing them, and then someday they're going to unleash them on the world. Thank you for listening to the Whatcast. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. Enjoy the podcast? Get yourself a Whatcast t-shirt or a sticker pack. Who was that dude on that one episode? Try the links in Homie's page. All this and more can be found at www.thewhatcasters.com. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.